The husband of a Massachusetts woman missing since New Year's Day was charged Tuesday, January 17 with her murder. Brian Walsh, 47, was already charged with misleading police investigating the disappearance of his wife, 39-year-old Anna Walsh, from their home in Cohasset. He had been held on $500,000 bond. Norfolk District Attorney Michael Morrissey announced the upgraded charge on Tuesday ahead of Walsh's scheduled Wednesday, January 18 arraignment. Additional details of the investigation and the evidence that supported those charges are likely to be presented at arraignment, the prosecutor said. Walsh, a 47-year-old tax consultant and convicted art fraudster who pleaded guilty in 2021 to unloading a pair of bogus Andy Warhol paintings on an unsuspecting art dealer for $80,000, told investigators that his wife left early in the morning on New Year's Day for her job in Washington, D.C., after she was called into work for an emergency. But Anna Walsh never got on a plane that day, and worried co-workers finally called police on January 4, a day after she was originally scheduled to fly into town, and before Brian Walsh notified anyone that anything was amiss. Detectives subsequently discovered blood and a bloody knife in the basement of the Walsh's home in the Boston suburb of Cohasset. They retraced Walsh's steps and found he visited a local Home Depot on January 2, spending $450 on mops, tarps, tape, buckets, and drop cloths, prosecutors said. A few days later, cops reportedly found trash bags containing blood, a rug, a hatchet, a hacksaw, and used cleaning supplies at a waste transfer station in Peabody, about 90 minutes north of Cohasset. Walsh offered his version of events when police showed up January 4 at the couple's home to do a wellness check on Anna. He claimed she left home around 4 or 5 a.m. on January 1, while he was still sleeping. Later that day, Walsh claimed, he drove to his mother's house in the town of Swampscott, but got lost because he had left his phone behind, according to a probable cause affidavit filed in court on the lying charge. He also told cops he ran errands on January 1 at Whole Foods and CVS, but prosecutors said he was not seen on security cameras at either location and that Walsh was unable to provide receipts verifying his story. He was, however, seen the next day on surveillance cameras at Home Depot, where he allegedly bought hundreds of dollars worth of cleaning supplies, the affidavit states. Yet, Walsh told investigators that the only time he left the house on January 2 was to take one of his and Anna's three young boys out for ice cream. These various statements caused a delay in the investigation, Assistant District Attorney Lynn Beeland said last week. That allowed him time to either clean up evidence, dispose of evidence, and causing a delay. Nevertheless, Walsh's defense attorney, Tracy Minor, said in court that her client has been incredibly cooperative. The case has reverberated across the nation and continues to rattle area residents. Walsh has pleaded not guilty to misleading investigators. Numerous questions remain unanswered, including the whereabouts of Anna Walsh, or her body. They have to have something on him, because what they've released so far is pretty circumstantial, Joseph Giacalone, a retired NYPD detective sergeant who now teaches at New York City's John Jay College of Criminal Justice, told on Tuesday, January 17. Walsh, who in 2018 was accused of stealing nearly $1 million from his late father's estate, is a very calculated person, Ron Rivlin, the buyer of the fake Warhols, previously told the Daily Beast. A longtime family friend who has known Walsh since he was a child, described him as entitled, and said he never thought the rules applied to him, like he was above it all. Before dropping out of Carnegie Mellon University during his freshman year, Walsh spent time as an inpatient at a psychiatric hospital, where he was diagnosed as a sociopath, according to probate court filings. I went on a trip to China with Brian and Tom and my partner at the time, a friend of Walsh's estranged father attested in an affidavit filed amid a 2019 court battle over Thomas Walsh's will. I witnessed firsthand what Brian was capable of. I saw Brian attempt to smuggle out antiquities from China. When Brian was confronted, he picked up a stanchion and literally attempted to kill four or five guards that had come to talk to him about his crime. Brian is not only a sociopath, but also a very angry and physically violent person. The investigation continues, all the news about the case in the following videos.